What up, HyperChange? Uh, welcome to another episode. Just got off the Tesla earnings call. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear details of what you need to know on the call. Frankly, it was an extremely boring call relative to usual. There were some good, amazing insights, which I'm gonna tell you, but Elon was not on the call. This is the big news. We kind of knew this was coming. The questions were uh, pretty boring. Everything was pretty much scripted. We had Zach Kirkhorn uh, leading it, opening it up. We had Drew, a couple other executives were on the call. Um, but yeah, that's the big news is Elon wasn't on the call. I'm a little bit bummed. It was boring. That is what it is. Now let's talk about the juicy tidbits on the call. So the first a fascinating question that I thought was about the 4680 battery cell, of course, say.com y'all retail shareholders coming in with much better question than the analysts love to see that. Um, when is the first car with the 4680 cell coming? Drew drops the bomb and says early next year, it sounds like, um, with the Fremont manufacturing line ready to support. So there's lots of insight to unpack from that. Got my little 4680 battery cell right here. But essentially what that means is Tesla's ramping. Um, I do have a source at the Cato Road facility. They've been grinding like crazy on that. They're producing cells. They work, but it's all about the machine that builds the machine. They were having some problems with some large roller machine. So they decided to move forward with eight small roller machines. They are putting those in Austin, um, but it sounds like it's going to take a while for the production to spin up. So um, in the Austin, we're going to talk more about Austin and Berlin in a second, but the as the Austin and Berlin factories ramp, it sounds like Fremont's going to be shipping them 4680 battery cells. So between the lines, I actually think the, the new Model Ys from Fremont and Berlin will start with the 4680 and structural pack. Um, it's, it's just going to be in very small volume as they're producing those cells in Cato Road. They're going to take time to get the casting machines right. So my read in between there, it's going to take a while, but this is huge news. This is Tesla's figured out the 4680 cell. It works. We're probably a couple quarters away from it being in a vehicle. This is the starting point of Tesla commercializing that new battery technology eventually um, for the $25,000 Tesla, which is my next tidbit. They ask about that. The company's like, look, we got way too many full of a plate. Like we need to do Model Y in Austin with the structural pack and Berlin and Cybertruck. Between that, that is where Tesla's focused for the next 12 to 18 months at least. I think the Model 2, or, or sorry, I can't, I shouldn't say that. The cheaper Tesla is just gonna take a longer time to come out. And then there was a really interesting question about how many car models is it going to take for Tesla to get to 20 million? Um, because the best-selling car in the world sells about a million units now. Tesla wants to hit 20 million units. Are they going to have 20 models or are they going to, well, the answer is essentially they're going to break the mold. Um, and they, this is, here's the, the insights coming. They, they were like, okay, so the Model 3 record selling premium sedan. Model Y is going to be the best-selling car in the world, despite the cost, the, the fact that it costs 50 Gs. Tesla stretch, it breaks molds. Um, Tesla's, you know, when people define these little boxes of the automotive industry, they don't understand that consumer perception changes. Tesla's breaking the mold. Um, look what happened with the iPhone. So this is an iPhone-like technology product disruption in the automotive industry. We're going to see more units sold of one vehicle than anything ever before, unlike anything in the automotive industry. That's why Tesla's going to hit 20 million units with just a handful of models, which is unprecedented for every other automaker. Now, they say that the robo-taxi, they mentioned the robo-taxi as a model. So here's my big juicy tidbit is that I think the Model 2 isn't the Model 2. We all know it's not, but it's the robo-taxi. It doesn't have a steering wheel. They wait until autonomy is solved. You know Elon's ambitious about autonomy. You know he wants them to get to full self-driving in a year or two. That's the same timeline of when they're going to introduce this new vehicle. So the $25,000 car might not even be a car you can actually buy. It's just a car that you can get a ride from because it'll be have full autonomy that comes with it. Might not even have a steering wheel. Might not even look like what we think a car is today. This is a new sort of theory I have about this car is if you're going to redesign. And I think the re in between the lines here is that they call it the robo taxi. So I feel like the robo taxi is the name of the new Tesla model. And this is, um, I don't know, I'm still kind of unpacking and thinking this through. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments, but this is going to be, I think a huge game changer. And, um, now I think it's going to be called the robo taxi and it's going to be fully designed for autonomy. And this is the game changer that Tesla's coming out with after they do the model Y and Cybertruck. Okay. Capacity. Somebody asked about, uh, factory still 2024 Shanghai ramping. Oh, they say Fremont is at 430,000 units now. It's going to grow 50% to 645,000. Um, Shanghai's ramping, mo mostly with Model Y. Remember, that's their home run. And our plans with time are to keep growing capacity with that factory. Does that mean more Model Y or does that mean the robo-taxi itself? I don't know. I was trying to read between the lines there, but that's something. Berlin plus Austin is all about Model Y, but they have set, they're have they set in locations with significant land and ability to expand. So both of these factories are targeting to get to 10,000 Model Y units a week. Eventually, it's 500,000 cars a year. That confirms what I heard in Berlin. But now we're talking about new vehicles being produced there. Is it the Robo Taxi? That's what I think it is. That's why Tesla bought all of this extra land in Berlin and Austin because eventually they're going to be pumping out these Robo Taxis there. 
Um, and their goal right now is to do a couple million units in a few years, 20 million eventually. They're literally growing as quickly as they possibly can, trying to hit 50% every single year. Um, no deliveries for Berlin and Austin by the end of the year. They need, they're going to build a handful of these vehicles, test the quality, make sure they're good before starting cu customer deliveries. Um, now, Cybertruck, they're building alpha versions now, and they're looking to launch it. I couldn't hear what he said. Was it late or likely next year? But uh, it sounds like the Cybertruck's just going to take a while. This is a totally new unit, totally new production process. Um, the structural battery pack, it just they haven't figured out Model Y. Then they're doing Cybertruck. So I truly don't think the first Cybertruck deliveries are going to happen until like Q4 2022. I know we're all bummed about that. But when it hits, it's going to be amazing. It's just going to take a while. Um, okay, insurance. They spent a lot of time talking about Tesla insurance, clearly nerding out on this. Zach said he's stoked about it. Um, they're solving a problem. They didn't know they needed to do insurance. Then they were like, wait. Insurance is making our cars unaffordable. Nobody's insuring them correctly. When you look at the insurance industry, bad drivers are underpaying and are being subsidized by good drivers, and they don't have enough data to accurately price this. This is a massive flaw in the entire system. And if you roll into insurance with the monthly cost of a vehicle, specifically a robo-taxi, this is a big lever for affordability for the vehicles. This is, I think, key for the robo-taxi, especially when you assume that the liability is going from the human to the car. It just makes sense to, for Tesla to bring insurance in-house. And so what they're doing in Texas is fast fascinating. They are varying premiums based on your safety score. This is, it sounds simple. It's like Geico is dead in the water. I made whole videos about how Warren Buffett likes Geico. He's beefing with Tesla. It's like Tesla's going to put Geico out of business because Geico, they have no data on who you are, how you're driving, anything like that. Tesla, they even say on the call, computer on wheels. The safety score thing is mind blowing. All of this data about how you're driving is going to impact your insurance. And they talk about how um, now they have 150,000 cars using the safety score, over 100 million miles. They're analyzing this data. Um, first of all, there's a 30% lower chance of collision when you have a safety score because you're tripping about messing up your safety score, so you're driving safer. Additionally, Tesla's literally making the road safer. This is really awesome and something that I think the mission, they don't get enough credit for at all in the press. Everybody's covering FSD in the mainstream media. Nobody spends one second telling how Tesla is going to make the road safer for everybody. I think that's why I beef with all journalists and media because they're just not telling us the dope, good part of the news and the truth and the most exciting and inspiring part of Tesla's FSD product, which is making the road safer for all of us. And so um, Tesla's always trying to build the safest cars in the world. And now they're also getting data that's saying uh, if you have a higher safety score, you're much lower, uh, multiple chance, multiple X lower to have a probability of collision. So not only are they deploying the safety score is it making people drive safer, but the safety score is proving accurate so they can see the safest drivers and they're actively using that data to inform your insurance score. This is the future of driving. Um, the fact that we were driving unmonitored, you could do a crazy turn, you could skirt, you could brake suddenly, you could have high G-forces and your insurance company would never know is going to seem ludicrous in the future. Tesla's changing all of that. Um, oh, thanks for the super chat. I'm keeping it up, bro. Timer, Timmer. Um, okay, margins. This last sort of juicy tidbit um, from the call, I think this was so fascinating. Considerable upside on gross and operating margins. Very optimistic in the long term. Difficult to predict over the next four or five quarters. But as we go from software to hardware, or from just hardware to hardware plus software, this means there's considerable upside in margins. This is the biggest number if you're analyzing Tesla. How big can they get? How profitable can they get on that revenue? Basically what they're saying now is, we are gonna keep going from here. This savage quarter of 30% auto margins and 15% operating margins, they are going higher than here. So that, are we getting 40 and 20, 40 and 25, 45% gross margins, 25% operating margins? This is unheard of. For a car company it's a computer company and to hear your conservative cfo say considerable upside like he calculates every single word that he says so for him to say these margins are going higher you think this is dope squad we you ain't seen nothing yet that's what zach herkorn's saying about the margins and that to me is the most bullish thing um long term and he ends it by saying we cannot ramp capacity fast enough everybody in the world wants a tesla i mean i always say there's two types of people in the world the people who have a tesla or people who want a tesla maybe there's a third category of people who don't know they want a tesla because they just haven't been you know awoken to it yet but um that's where i think we're at and so it, it's it's uh they're literally like why are they working so hard on their supply chain shortages? Why couldn't they just phone in a decent quarter? Why are they still pressing a million miles an hour like they're a startup with their, you know, trying to survive? Because they want to get everybody their EVs. Shout out for Berlin, Richard. Thank you for the super chat. And they're trying to get everybody their EVs. They're trying to get everybody electric cars. This is a problem that they're trying to fix with urgency. Yes, more than one and a half percent of the cars sold in the US are Tesla. That's amazing. They're transitioning the fossil fuel industry or us away from that. But 
there's still so much more work to do. And that's why Tesla's working with this savage urgency. Uh, Breton, yo, thank you for being a longtime follower. I really appreciate that. I love the Tesla community. Y'all are amazing. Let me know if you have a question right now um, that I could answer in the chat. Otherwise, I wanted to keep this short and just keep it brief. Um, but let y'all know, those are the juicy details from the call. Uh, 4680 cell coming early next year. Fremont supporting Berlin and Austin. Uh, model uh, 25K car is going to be a robo taxi. That's what they're going to call it. I don't think it'll have a steering wheel. It's going to be designed from autonomy. That's going to be built at Austin and Berlin and Shanghai um, in this new land that they have. Um, margins are only going higher. I think that's all you need to know about the conference call. The financials were incredible. Uh, I, I, I covered that in my previous live streams. So you can check that out if you want to know more about the numbers. I'll cover that on the channel going forward. Subscribe. Shout out to the Patreons. But overall, an unbelievable quarter for Tesla. Elon's off the call because he's too professional. They don't need him. Tesla's growing up. It's a little bit sad because I love hearing Elon leak stuff he's not supposed to and give us all these little schemes and tidbits. And it's Elon. We love hearing from him. But um, this is a good moment. Tesla's growing up. They're maturing. It's like seeing your homie grow up. You know, you got to give him props. And that's what's happening. Tesla's becoming ready to become one of the largest companies in the world. Um, okay, John, thanks for the super chat. One more question. What about the uh, skittishness around commodity prices and cost of Berlin ramps? Those are all near-term things, you know? Commodity prices are going to fluctuate. Um, that could hit margins in the near term. Uh, the ramp of Austin Berlin is going to take a while. They're doing the new 4680 cell. It's going to be slow. But it's, 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 you know, by the end of 2022, those two factories are firing on all cylinders. If you're a long-term investor, that's all that matters. To me, a lot of this has been de-risked. There's going to be unknown unknowns, as they say, to work through. But I think Tesla will push through them. Nothing about the semi. Um, nothing about the delivery van. I think Tesla is truly laser focused on executing their product roadmap now. The biggest thing that they're working on that they're not telling us is the RoboTaxi um, product. Okay, see y'all next time. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Love you. Have an amazing day. Peace. Do I think, oh, this is a good one. Do I think they will sell the RoboTaxi to consumers? That's, that's going to be the question. Or do they just operate them all? on a fleet. I don't know. I don't even think Elon knows yet. It just depends on the, if they can solve autonomy. So that's a thinker. That's a thinker to leave it on. Anyway, see you next time. Peace.